Hello and welcome to a new tutorial of Toon Boom Animate Pro 3 with me Oli Putland. Now let's get on with it. If you notice from the last tutorial I've moved things around a little bit because I wanted to um, simplify the interface for everybody uh, including me. Uh, there were too many things I thought on the top like uh, undo and redo and all that sort of stuff. You know where they are. They're all in menus and stuff and the hotkeys are all the same so I won't go over all through that. But it's just easier for me to get to things and just a simpler inf interface to, to look at. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about animation today because I think animation is kind of important when you're talking about an animation program and I'm going to get stuck in right away. So let's create a new uh, drawing layer and I'm going to call it Prince because yes that lovable Prince that we had last time is making a comeback and I'm going to start with frame one and I'm going to draw him Let's start again. Come on, come on. That's it. Right. I'm going to draw him in doing a run. So he's going to be smiling away and just put his arms on and do a bit of a plume there. I'm not trying to create the Lion King here. This animation will be incredibly crude and incredibly basic. I'm just going to turn on the onion skinning here and uh, the way it works is these blue handles uh, show the limits of the onion skinning. So if I move that blue handle there you can just about see it appearing and disappearing. And uh, red signifies behind frames and green signifies in front of frames. So we're on frame 3. You can change the colours uh, if you want to in preferences. They don't have to be green and red, which is quite helpful if you've got a background that's green or red. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we will keep them exactly the same colours. I'm just moving that boundary there so that we can see that frame. There we go. So he's running here. Uh, there we go. And then that one down. Bum, 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 bum. There we go, and smiley face as well. Now, just turning off and you're skinning there. Now, the last frame hasn't got the right length of exposure. That's what they call it in this. You'll notice uh, that each of these drawings have two frame exposures. So, uh, so to increase that, I'll just do an extreme version of what I'm about to do at frame 50. By extending the exposure, here, we can extend that drawing to last all the way up till frame 50. Well, we don't want that, we just want it up to frame, what is it, frame 8. So I'll just do that. And then we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. There we are. So each drawing has two frame exposures. Now, if I press play, you'll see the animation and it only sort of goes as far as frame 8 and then it stops. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things here. First of all, if we move, oops, if we move this little black triangle, and you can move both. There's another one there. This signifies where you want the play range to be. Um, so I'm going to play that back, and I'm going to say loop, play loop. So if I press play, it'll loop, and it'll show you this glorious piece of Pixar-like animation. Or it would do if I'd done that. Now, I'm going to move that play range all the way to the end. Now, this red thing symbolizes the end of time itself. Um, and I'm going to move that there. So that would also do the same thing. But the difference is, is that I can't move the timeline beyond that point. And if I move that red point any further in, you notice it the rest of it is into oblivion. It doesn't exist. Um, very much like the end of time itself. So it's just a handy little differentiation, but this really does symbolize the end of the shot. And this little black triangle represents the end of what you just want to preview at the time. Um, 
there you see. So it, this is a kind of temporary thing, whereas the red thing is a permanent thing, which you can move around, but it's sort of when you render your video, this is the thing that counts. So anyway, I'm gonna move that to frame 90. Now, I'm going to select these four frames here, these four drawings, not four frames. Uh, these individual little diddle 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 things of frames, these are drawings. You must remember the differences between them because it's very, very complicated. Now, I'm going to copy these cells and I'm going to paste them as a cycle directly afterwards. Now, in Flash, what you would do is you would select those and make it into a symbol. And then you could do whatever you want with them and it would repeat on a loop. And uh, for the purposes of this exercise, what I want to do is make this prince move from where he is now to over there. And as I say, you would just in Flash, copy those four drawings and make them into a symbol and then move them along. Well, in this, what you do is think of this entire layer as one massive, never-ending pane of glass. And on top of this pane of glass, you're able to put your drawings. So I'm going to, as I said, I've selected those drawings and I've copied them. I'm now going to paste cycle and I'm going to select, I don't know, 11 and it's going to paste it normal. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I did reverse, it'd be 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. If I did forward and reverse, it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, uh, you know what I mean. So we'll do that and that gives us a loop, a looping piece of animation there. Now, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this tutorial is I'm going to draw a box around each drawing to illustrate what I mean by moving the drawings around as opposed to a piece of glass. Okay, so and that's our four drawings. And if I play those back, you'll notice that, yes, there's, imagine that that's a piece of paper and it's swapped out each time. Now. What do you think is going to happen at frame five? Do you think that those boxes are going to be there or are they going to be disappeared? What do you think? Well, I'm going to relieve you of your tenacious worries because when I press it, that is exactly the same as that. And um, if I'm right, that will be too, yes. Basically, what happens is when you draw a drawing in uh, Toon Boom, it remembers the drawing in its entirety and will copy that drawing over. So when you're copying a drawing, you are copying the drawing. You're not copying what's in the drawing. It's a slightly different way of thinking about things. Let me show you what's going on in the library. Now, this is something I didn't show you last week. At the moment, we have four drawings uh, that I've drawn and I did them in order. So let's call this one one, and we'll call this one two, and we'll call this one three, and we'll call this one four. And then if I go forwards in time, you'll notice that all of those have been updated with the new information. See, they've all had one, two, three, four on them as well. And if you notice here, in the drawing substitution box, it also shows you the corresponding number of the drawing, not the frame it was drawn on, because after all, it says drawing one, we are now at frame 17. So that is drawing one and will always be drawing one. If I do squiggle, 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 it'll update it there and it'll update it there. This is drawing number one. Um, you can change the name of the drawing. You can call it alpha, beta, Z, whatever you want, you know. But um, it is this thing called a drawing and it is, it is sort of changeable only on this layer. Uh, go away, autosave. You're saving my life, I know, but please go away. Now, um, what I'm going to show is um, how you work out the difference between keyframes at positioning and drawing positioning, because this can be a complicated thing which will make the brain leak out of your ears if you're not careful, so um, bear with me. On frame one, I'm going to create a keyframe. And then on frame, actually no, not on frame one, I'm gonna get rid of that keyframe. On frame 21, I'm gonna insert a keyframe and then I'll add those 60, I'll insert a keyframe here. Um, so I've got two keyframes here. Now the default 
setting for Toon Boom is something called a motion keyframe, which means that any position you put this pane of glass in, um, it will move it to another position if you move it, and it will it will create the movements in between the two positions on its own. And I don't want to do that because I find that very confusing unless I've told the computer, please make it, please make that happen. I'll show you what I mean. At the moment, we've got position one here, and then position two here. Now, if I make position two a different place by moving, I use this transform tool here and this actually moves the drawing it's, it doesn't move the drawing it moves the pane of glass that the drawings are on so if I move if I move that please cooperate if I move that over then you'll notice that there's a bing 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 and it's kind of handy actually that it is uh, drawing number two that's in two positions there because as you'll notice it's not the drawing that's moved it's the it's the sort of pane of glass that everything's on. Now if I right click in between these two keyframe points and I select motion keyframe, you're now getting a line that connects these two dots, which means I'm going to move from this position to this position here. And now if I play it, it won't move until frame 21 and then it moves over and then stops and then carries on. So I hope that this kind of you know, you kind of get what's going on here because it can be a little bit confusing. I'll try to clarify even more with this. Let's say um, I wanted to actually move the position of the drawing, not the whole pane of glass on page, on the, on position three. So I will select the selection tool. What do they call it here? What do they call it? Come on tooltip. The one time I want the tooltip to appear. Oh, for heaven's sake, come on. Cooperate, all right, select, all right, I could have done that. Okay. Now I'll select the whole thing. I could select a bit of it if I wanted to, just the three and move that around, but I don't, I'll select the whole thing. And I'm gonna move it randomly over there. So if you're guessing a right, every time that three appears, it'll ping over, because that is the position of drawing three. Um, and if I play it, see, all it's doing is moving in relation to the other drawings. It's not, if you think about it, these drawings are kind of all registered to each other in terms of position. But then this keyframe world is the pane of glass is related to a pane of glass. It's not related to the individual drawings. It can be a very, you know, confusing thing. I, play with it, work it out, and then there'll be a Nirvana moment where suddenly your eyes will pop out of their sockets and you think, oh, clear, now I'm at one with the gods. But until that happens, you'll be tearing your hair out. Trust me, it will happen. Um, and my advice to you is just play with it and look at what I'm doing here and try different values and all the rest of it and you will, you will get it eventually. But um, remember that there are basically three kinds of selection. There's selection for the drawing, which is what I'm doing now. And I'm going to put it kind of where it ought to be. I'll just use the onion skinning to kind of get an idea of where it's supposed to go. It's about there. So I moved it back. Um, there is a sort of secondary selection tool or the contour editor, as they, they call it, which actually edits the, the lines themselves. But I mean, you can sort of move whole bits of it around, but it's a bit, it's not really advised. Notice I'm picking up the whole bit there. I can't manipulate the hand itself, whatever it is, donut. Um, but I can manipulate it with the white tool there, you see? So it's a slightly different tool. So those are the two main selections. And then the third one really manipulates the entire layers movement. So there's a lovely little thing to confuse the heck out of you. Um, but there we are, hopefully that uh, metaphor of the glass and the pages will help you out because it is very complicated to get your head around initially I know and it is different to flash um, but trust me once you do get it it is a marvelous little idea um, I'll go into more detail in another tutorial with how to manipulate frames but this I think on its own is enough to deal with um, I'm now going to also show you one other thing which is easing 
um, because at the moment all that's happening is between this frame and this frame it's a constant rate and you might want to have something that's a little bit more subtle you might want to have it sort of fast at this point and they're very very slow at this point so what you do is you right click within this between these two points and you go to set ease for multiple parameters just trips off the tongue and um, then the first frame you can change the rate and then you go to apply previous or apply next you can sort of toggle between the two points or more than two points if you have more than one if you had a third point it would go apply next apply next apply next it would go excuse me it would navigate from one keyframe to another and you can manipulate the rate of travel using these sort of handle things so what i've done is i've created an s shape speed path which basically means hardly any change hardly any change hardly any change lots of change lots of change hardly any change hardly any change hardly any change that's how it works this isn't the movement in a sense this is just the timing of the movement and these are the things are currently ticked that it affects um, had we uh, rotated the, this frame a bit it would also affect the rotation you know that sort of thing um, so if we look at that it should be slow at the beginning fast in the middle and slow at the end let's have a look there we are instant pixar you know i mean who needs toy story when you've got mr prince sausage there we go so it's very concise but i hope that this tutorial has proved useful to uh, somebody but as i say try it again that's why i've sort of admitted the jokes for this one this is the one time during my tutorials where i won't be telling loads of jokes because it is mind-numbingly weird to get your head around at times this and i wouldn't want to uh, dilute it with with humor too much uh, anyway that's how animation in its basic most basic principles works <laughs> <laughs>